This video is going to be a bit of a crash course on the native selection tools built into Photoshop, really geared more towards beginner users. If you're an intermediate to advanced user, you may already know what's in here, but I am going to cover the full range of selection tools in Photoshop. And it's important to know most of them because most of them will be very useful in conjunction with your luminosity masking and selection work. So first, let's just cover what a selection is. Normally on an image, let's go create a blank pixel layer. Normally on an image, if I click on B to paint, I can just paint anywhere I want in the image with no restrictions. Let's undo that. If I have a selection in place, go grab the rectangular marquee tool or hit M to load this tool, then click and drag. That's a selection. And what it's going to do is control where we can adjust the image with another tool. So let's go click B for our brush. And now when we paint, notice we can only paint within the boundaries of that selection. So this is a hard edged selection that's just based on a rectangle we drew. Not a very smart selection, not even that useful in, in many cases, but it starts to show you that with a selection in place, you can control what you're adjusting in the image. And that's what selections are all about. By themselves, they don't do anything to the image. They just let you control what you can do to the image with some other tool. Let's go ahead and undo that with Command Z. We'll get rid of this selection by hitting Command D. You can go up to Select, Deselect, but if you hit Control or Command D, that will get rid of your selection. Now, there are some other shapes here. You've got the rectangle, we've got the ellipse, and we've got some straight lines. I don't use any of these all that much. The next tool, though, is going to be your lasso tool. With the lasso tool, you can now start to draw things freehand in whatever shape you want. And similarly, if we use a brush, we can only paint within the boundaries of that selection. So same principle, different shape to it, has no relationship to the image, it's just whatever you draw. So it's a dumb selection on the image that creates a hard edged output because everything is either 100% selected or 100% protected. That's the only difference. Notice that if my tool I'm using is something like a paintbrush, notice the edges there are kind of building up a little bit. So if you use a soft tool with a hard edge selection, you can still build up a little bit more of a natural result if you're careful, but the selection itself is only giving you limited assistance. So let's undo that. We'll deselect this and let's take a look at how we can take a selection and start to turn it into something more useful. So we will once again hit L for the lasso, same tool we had a moment ago. This time, let's draw something around the foreground here. When you have an active selection, if you go and click on a new adjustment layer in Photoshop, it will by default turn it into a layer mask that's equivalent to the selection. So click on brightness and contrast. Now we have this brightness contrast layer with this selection. If we alt click, we can see, yep, there is the hard edged lasso selection that we drew. If we go and adjust this brightness contrast layer now, we can of course make the sand brighter or darker, which doesn't look very nice right now because the edges are very obviously Photoshop. There's no transition whatsoever but we can go and start to tweak this mask. If we click on the mask, go to the, the properties. If you don't see properties, go to window properties to pull this up. For the mask, bring up the feather, which will automatically blur the edges of this mask. Let's bring it up quite a bit, even more. You start getting up to around 500 there. You can't detect exactly where the edges of that selection are anymore. Not something that's gonna work if you're trying to pick out the difference between the sky and the mountains, but in an area like this where the boundaries don't have to be so precise, you get this smooth result. And now when we go to brightness contrast, see how clean and smooth that is. And what we have in the mask, we alt click the mask or option click the mask. You can see that this is what's happened. The feathering is like applying a Gaussian blur. If we go back to zero feathering, that was the original mask created from our hard edge selection. But we increase it to the right there, we're blurring it out and smoothing it out and getting a more natural result. Let's go ahead and delete these and look at that one more time. So again, draw a selection. And instead of using Photoshop, which is gonna create a hard edge mask, if we do it in Lumenzia, it will automatically feather it for us. You can go into that mask and you can still tweak the result if you want a different amount of feathering, but you automatically have that nice smooth edge. So that's one great way to use a lasso selection is to tell Lumenzia where you want to work in the image. It's not based on luminosity. It's just you saying, hey, I want to work here or here or wherever you want to work to give it some guidance to the tool. 
Let's go ahead and delete this and take a look at what we can do with these selections. So, so far we've just drawn one selection and done something with it. You can combine these selections to get a little more fancy. So let's say we drew this selection down here and then we decided, well, we didn't really want to go all the way to the edge. Well, you can adjust it. You can go up top here and you have buttons to let you pick whether you add to the selection or subtract from it or combine it with another selection so it's the overlap area. An easy way to do this is the keyboard shortcuts. You'll use this a lot, so it's worth knowing these. If you hold down the shift key, so you get that little plus. If I draw now, I add to the selection. I can you know, keep adding to it. If I hold the alt or option key, I get this minus and I can remove it. So I can go and drag this shape and I've just removed that edge that I didn't want in the first place. I could clean up this little corner here, smoothing things out however I want to. So combining these selections can be very powerful. It might be another simple lasso selection like this, or it might be that you've created a luminosity selection and you want to refine it to remove a certain part of it. So many different powerful ways you can use these. Let's deselect that with Command or Control D. Go on to the next one here. We have the Magic Wand and Quick Select tool. They have similar ideas. Let's use Magic Wand. These are the first tools we're using for selections that are actually have some intelligence. If I click with the Magic Wand on something that's dark and blue, the tool will find other things that are dark and blue in the image. If I click on these bright reds, it tries to find more reds. These yellows tries to find more bright yellowish type things in the image subject to the constraints we put up in the toolbar up top here which i won't get into but you can control how this tool behaves to a pretty good degree so it's interesting in that it's looking at the underlying luminosity and color of the image to create a selection however it's still creating a hard edged selection if we go and turn this into a brightness contrast layer and look at the mask you can see it's hard edged so it's smart in looking at the input it's using the luminosity to consider what to select but it's kind of dumb on the output it's providing this hard-edged output with no nuance everything's just fully adjusted so if we go and adjust our brightness contrast here you see i just get these terrible rough edges there's no nuance to this tool so it's also a hard edge tool even though it looks at the brightness and values of the pixels let's delete that the other related tool is the quick select tool. This tool is really neat for selecting skies. What you do is you click and drag, and as you're dragging, it just looks for other similar things. So in one quick move there, we just selected the entire sky. We could go down now and do brightness contrast. And if you alt click, you can see, yes, it is a hard edge, but it's a very precise edge. And now when we go and adjust the brightness, on a macro level, it looks pretty good. It's an awfully close, result. So far, probably the smartest tool we've used. Now, if we zoom in though, here's the problem. It's still a hard edged output. So looking at these edges here, you can see where it's not perfect. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Nope, oh, didn't mean to click that. Let's go to the hand tool and look around here. See if we see any obvious issues. Let's go push it to more extreme values and now it'll become a little more Parents, see there, there you go. Now when you push it to more extreme, you can see that there's some obvious issues in that underlying mask. It's not perfect. Well, we could feather it. We could bring up the feather a few pixels and see if that's getting better. But what's happening is we're starting to get halos. So feather is no longer gonna be an appropriate tool for fixing the edge of this selection, but it sure seems like there ought to be a way to salvage it and fix these little issues without manually going over the mask with a paintbrush and it turns out there is. So at this point, we've exhausted all the selection tools in the toolbar here. The next tool we wanna to look at is up in Select, Select and Mask. And this will refine selections or masks. We're gonna use it on the mask we already have at this point, but it would be the same thing we did to a selection. Within this interface, there's all sorts of different options, but the one that you should really care about is this radius, which is going to intelligently look around the edges of well, of an edge. It's going to detect that this is an edge. And within the bounds you set here, it'll try and find things that are more like the white selection and add more of them and find things that are more like the black selection and remove them. So it's just trying to look and see, hey, along the edges here, within the radius you specify, where should I push things? Well, we had issues out to a few pixels wide. So maybe we just give it about a three pixel range and tell it to look there. And look at how nuanced that just got. If we go to the before view, so we click on the original, 
we had this kind of rough version and it's been cleaned up. And what's happening is it's using a true luminosity tool that is going through, it's looking at the underlying values of the pixels and then it's outputting shades of gray. If we look at the original, there are some shades of gray here, but what you're getting is just anti-aliasing. That's kind of like a, like a one or two pixel feathering or blurring. It's There's no intelligence. It doesn't care about what's underneath it. It's just arbitrarily blurring the edge and hoping that that's good enough. Whereas Refine Edge is really truly looking at the pixels. So you can see, for example, let me just make this a little smaller here. Notice that the edges here go from white to black quickly, whereas here they stay very gray. It's intelligently refining the edges here. So an awesome tool for cleaning up the edges. Let's go ahead and say, okay. And now I'm gonna hit Command Z to look before and after. And you can see I didn't get it perfect. I didn't spend enough time figuring out the right values, but it sure got a lot better. And if we spend some more time, we can get this to a point where you just really won't have any detectable edge. So that's the first luminosity tool that we've looked at in here. The selected mass tool, the refine part of it, the refine brush and the refine edge is actually going to give you a luminosity based adjustment of your selection or mask, but only at the edges, not the entire selection, just the edges. Okay, let's zoom back out. Let's get rid of this. And it's time for the next luminosity based selection. If we go up to select color range, this tool is going to allow you to go pick things based on color and brightness. If I click on this yellow sky here, we can see this preview. So what you want is this window can either show you the image or the selection, set it to selection, and the preview could be anything from your mask to the original image. So I like setting these to selection and none to get this view. And what you do is you just tell it like how much tolerance in the selected color or brightness and how much range, which is just geographically how far to go. So if we set this to kind of a moderate range and fuzziness, we can go click on this part of the sky and it's gonna select a bunch of stuff like it, subject to these other constraints. And we can add to it. If we hold down the shift key, we can just click and drag right across that sky. And now we have the whole top of the sky and we can click and drag across this part of the sky here. And now we've got this whole selection of sky. But notice that parts of this selection preview are gray. So it's not all white or black, it's not hard edge. Go ahead and hit okay. And you, again, you see the marching ants, but they're not telling you the true story because marching ants aren't sophisticated enough to show you selections that are less than 50%. They're just showing you the boundary between things that are less than half selected and things that are more than half selected. So let's go and create our brightness contrast layer again. We'll alt click it, and now we can see the underlying luminosity based adjustment of this mask. So now if we go and adjust the brightness and contrast, it's going to adjust it, but it's going to feather the edges here. And so, yeah, at some extreme level, things won't look right, but it's much more tolerant and smooth. And so again, this is a true luminosity based selection. If we go back up to that tool to color range, we were sampling colors, but you can also just tell it to pick specific colors or highlights, midtones, and shadows. So these are all true luminosity selection techniques. Now they're not nearly as advanced as the things we'll do with Lumenzia or whatever luminosity masking panel you might be using, but it does give you a pretty good degree of control and it is a true luminosity based tool. Let's go ahead and delete this. There's a few other options worth mentioning here. There's reselect, which will pick up the last thing you had selected now this won't be an option under certain considerations. If you've manipulated pixels or added a new adjustment layer, you can't reselect, but otherwise it can be very helpful if you need to turn off a selection to go and paint something freehand and then turn it back on. And the keyboard shortcut there is going to be uh, shift command D or shift control D. Very helpful to know that one as well. There's inverse, so you can flip the selection you have. Notice the marching ants are now on the edges. So before we had selected inside the clouds, now we're selecting outside them or I guess the bright sky, now we're selecting all the dark stuff. There is select all. The only time I ever use this is when I wanna hit Command C to copy and go paste somewhere else. There is the focus area, which sounds nice. You could go and select a sharp subject against a fuzzy background, like a sports shot of a football player running across the screen. However, it has no uh, degree of softness. It's also a hard edge selection, so I just generally find it's not that useful. There's the new subject option in Photoshop CC 2018, which will go find people or animals intelligently. 
It also creates hard edge selections, but if you combine it with select and mask and other refinements, can be a powerful way to kickstart your cutout when you're trying to remove a subject from a background. There's the modify tools. Don't use these very often, but these are just basic ways to just uh, take the, the selection you have and just modify it a little bit. Like for example, to, to feather it or to make it a little bit smaller or bigger. And you can transform the selection, which will allow you to just rotate it. For example, if I have this, I can now shrink the selection and that sort of thing. I can't think of any tremendously useful ways of using that. So the basic tools you're going to want, let's deselect that. The basic tools you use a lot are going to be the lasso tool, the quick select tool, under the selection menu, um, the, the deselect, reselect, you of course use quite a bit. Color range is very useful and select and mask. Those are the tools that are most powerful to know in the basic Photoshop setup. Lastly, you can create luminosity selections using channels in Photoshop. So it's not a an obvious part of creating selections. It's sort of a hidden option. But if you go to Window, Channels, and look at the Channels palette, if you Control or Command click on any of the channels, it will load it as a selection. So if I Command click on RGB, it's taking the underlying image, the grayscale version of the image, that is, and converted it into selection. So the bright areas of the sky are mostly selected, and the dark areas of these trees are mostly protected. If we go and turn this into a brightness contrast layer and now look at our mask, you can see that's what it is. It is truly a luminosity mask built from channels. This is the basis of a lot of luminosity masking workflows. You won't need to use channels at all if you're using Lumenzia. If you're using my free panel, the channels will be created for you. You'll just have to manually go find the one you want and command or control click on it. You don't need to know that much about channels other than they're just kind of the underpinning of a lot of this ability. But look at what we can do now just with a simple uh, channel mask. We've not tried to pick anything very uh, interesting about it. It's just a basic light one channel mask. If we go and adjust our brightness now, notice it's biased towards the highlights. If we were to turn this off, you can see it adjusting the entire image. So very powerful way of controlling the image. And of course, that's where luminosity selections and masks get so interesting is their ability to target things much more precisely. That is truly the last selection tool in Photoshop. The last thing I want to mention about selections is the best way to use them is to actually create masks. So let's go and delete this. So just alt click on a new mask. And now if we create a new selection, we can paint through it onto the mask. Let's go and make our brightness be very negative. So once we start painting white on this mask, it'll make whatever we paint on it very dark. Go to channels, command click on RGB again. So we've now loaded that as a selection. Go back, select our layer mask, and hit B for a brush. So now when we paint, as long as you've got white paint painting through the selection, it will control what goes down on the mask. Let's alt click this and you can see that we've painted across this image, but we've painted with a lot of nuance. So we've biased to the sky, the bright areas of the sky, less so on things like these clouds and much less so on this ground. So let's hit Command Z to undo that. Let's look at our image and Let's zoom back and it'll show how you can be a little more useful. And I'm gonna I'm gonna hide these marching ants. I haven't mentioned this yet, but if you go up to view extras, you can hide them or hit Command or Control H. So the selection is still active, but you're just not looking at those ants. Lumenzia tells you there's still a selection active with that green glowing cell button, but it's still there. So now if we paint across this edge, we can darken that sky quite a bit. We got a lot of control there. And I'll maybe hit a second time, just bring it through a little bit more. Carries I care about. And one last time to get this sky a little bit better. But this is the basic idea of painting through a selection. Now we've got this adjustment that's pretty smooth overall. And if we look at the underlying mask, you can see how accurate that is. So the beauty of painting through a selection is you can control where you reveal that underlying luminosity mask. Also, if I hit B, if I just keep painting, you can build things up. So I'm going to undo that right there. This cloud right now is partially selected. Look at the image here. And if we paint over it, notice how the cloud gets more realistic because the general idea with a luminosity selection is going to be that it's 
fully revealed in one area and fully revealing another layer somewhere else, and then just having sort of a transition zone, painting through selections facilitates that whole process.